It was about producing materials that would inform the region and the world about what was deemed worthy of recording by people from Niue, Tuvalu, Solomon Islands, or Futuna. Uh, and by the way, the, the, I, I spent a bit of time with Ron, and that's where I got to know him best in, in uh, Wallace and Futuna, because we uh, went to do an IPS book there. We got some money, and I had no idea how to go about this, so I called Ron and asked him to come and come and assist if he could conduct a workshop in, in Wallace and Futuna. So the first time I went there, was, uh, was with him and it was really a privileged time uh, to, to spend with him. We spent one week in Nouvea and one week in, in Futuna uh, and I went back the next year and those books came out about two years after the, the beginning of the project. Uh, working on IPS also taught us to work on a minimal budget, uh, a situation which many working in the sec cultural sector would be familiar with. Uh, whether it's government officials, artists, civil society organizations, or small uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, and, and in spite of this, IPS was extremely productive uh, with, with our publications fellows working overtime to keep Ron's vision alive uh, until a few years ago. And IPS produced an average of about 8 to 20 books per year with a single publications fellow uh, who had a bit of assistance from, from the other fellows, and which is really an extraordinary feat for, for a publishing house anywhere in the world. Uh, again, this is a, a working alone and, and with, with uh, uh, little financial resources is something that uh, people working in the cultural sector are quite familiar with. Um, another aspect, and people have already talked a bit about this, uh, Pacific Studies at, at IPS was its uh, what I'll call transdisciplinarity, uh, which meant that the real focus was on the region rather than on particular disciplinary or academic approaches. And, and Rich talked about the, the difficulties of, of transferring into another academic world uh, 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 due to this approach, but I think it instilled in us a, a wider sort of all-encompassing vision uh, of the Pacific Islands, which mirror Ron's uh, books. So what we studied, research, taught wasn't focused on a single area or on a single approach. It, it had a, a whole or kind of joined up approach from which students could then uh, focus down to particular areas of interest. And maybe this was done at the expense of, of, uh, of theory, uh, but uh, it, it did allow us to, to get a better understanding, I think, of the region as a whole. And I think it also kept us away from, from some of the more kind of sterile intellectual debates, which may be interesting, but, but uh, don't necessarily have value and, and don't allow us to get on with, with, uh, with real work. Uh, and it, it also kept us away from, from something which, which uh, it tends to, to be present in, in a lot of the work on, on the Pacific, is this kind of problematizing. Of, of the region and trying to fit the region into preconceived uh, frameworks. And, and I think that was Ron's uh, influence, at least the, that's how, uh, how I felt it. And, uh, and I think although Ron didn't, it, it didn't necessarily adhere to it, Petty Haufa's assertion of an Oceania of frequent exchanges in voyaging, uh, like a Petty, he was skeptical of the often negative representations made of the region. And he kept away from, from preconceptions and observed and engaged with the region with an open mind, always asking new questions. And I think this, for us at IPS, it reinforced our sense of, of kind of wariness uh, with respect to images and discourses about Pacific Islands. Uh, and the transdisciplinary approach also meant that we could and did work on all aspects of the Pacific. The environment, the people, the land, the sea, the stories, the arts, the histories and identities, livelihoods and learning, the old, the young, men, women, the past, present and the future. The future. If anything, it's probably this last aspect that Ron would have found insufficiently addressed in our work at IPS. Ron rightly emphasized the need to focus more on the future. And this is something that's lacking in both academia and the policy development area. It seems that rather than set the pace and think carefully about the region, countries, communities, etc., want to be in 10, 20 years, thereby projecting ourselves into the future, we tend to stay stuck in an ever-disappearing present and in a mode of reaction to global agendas. 
There's a lot of reasons for this. One of them is certainly the lack of, of people or human resources and money to engage more people in academia and policy development. Uh, there's just simply not enough uh, uh, regional academics, thinkers and doers to allow the region to both think back critically and reflect on the past while at the same time anticipate the future while dealing with the present. But this lack of emphasis on visualizing and devising the future means that when it comes to policy development and implementation, we're at a disadvantage as a region. And it doesn't mean that we're bereft of vision. I mean, if you look at all the regional plans, national plans, and so forth, there's visions in there, but, but often they're, they're static. And, and what's missing is the, the emphasis on, on creativity to map out where to go and how to get there. Yet creativity lines the path to the future, but we, don't, we too seldom give uh, creativity free reign, even though so many of our young people are bursting at the seams with it. And I think, uh, I think Peggy's uh, illustration of that with the poly clubs is, is an indication of, of that. Um, and it applies, this, this applies to both academia and policy making, whether at USP or national and regional bureaucracies, uh, with some exceptions. Many of our young thinkers and creators are, are being somewhat stultified by systems and hierarchies that don't encourage, let alone allow them to venture into doing things differently. Um, we don't always privilege uh, imagination. And it, yet, if you look at the academic distinctions achieved by the region, they're due to, to our creative leaders, like Ron, like Peli Haufa, like Albert Wendt, uh, Vilsoni, Ropate Ngalo, Morgan, who's at the back somewhere, uh, Konai and Randy Thamen, and the younger ones, Francis Koyavaka Uta, Seula Johansson Fua, uh, Tevi Teaero, uh, older one, Pio Manoa, uh, sorry, Bridge, older one as well. Uh, Larry Thomas, younger one. Uh, Teresia Tea Iwa, younger one. Katerina Tea Iwa, who's not strictly from the USB uh, uh, mold, but, but uh, who's extremely creative and does great work. Uh, Robert Nicole, historian who thinks out the, outside the box. Uh, these are all multi skilled individuals who have ventured beyond convention and set new paradigms. So, getting locked into, into these constraints and lack of imagination it also applies to the world of regional public policy, uh, where we can, all, we can very easily get locked into an overemphasis on procedures, processes, protocol, and format at the expense of substance. The danger lurks that as long as we tick the right boxes, we can feel we've done our job, and that we have fit into the mold and delivered. Uh, we can do this, and we can dem demonstrate no imagination and creativity, but this is really at the expense of the future that Ron held so dear, and also to the well-beings of the people, it is peoples it is our role to serve. Okay, so what direction should we be taking in cultural policy for the future of our region? I think a quote by, by Ralph Rengedman, who, sorry, I forgot to mention him also, uh, he's, who's both a, an artist and academic and now a, a MP in, in Vanuatu. Um, and he says, uh, actually he wrote this uh, for a paper that he delivered last year in East Timor. Uh, it is not a matter of culture playing a role in or contributing, contributing to sustainable development, but rather that development can only be truly sustainable if it is based on and grows out of the culture of the majority of the people. This means that culture must be at the heart of development. Uh, so what we're trying to do at, uh, at SPC, and uh, there's a human development program, there's one person who looks after culture, one person who looks after gender, one person who looks after youth uh, for 22 uh, countries and territories. Um, but we're trying to do what we can, um, and what we're trying to do is, is to view culture and its uh, epistemological and heritage and cultural industries uh, dimension. And this is something that Katerina Iwa wrote uh, about very eloquently in the, in the Pacific Economic Bulletin. Um, and, and this is uh, this is central to political, economic, and social uh, well-being in, in the Pacific. That that we really. Uh, look at culture in all its dimensions. Uh, we know that people are engaged daily in a range of cultural activities and practices which provide meaning, generate resources, and influence the flow of events locally, nationally, and regionally. 
Uh, but it's our job to demonstrate this to policymakers, governments, regional institutions, donors, and 